الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا نبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله تسألون به والأرحم إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا <coughs> يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا كولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي <coughs> حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محثثاتها وكل محثث بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار ثم أما بعد المسنجر الله صلى الله عليه وسلم منشن that in the body there is a muscle of flesh if it is good, if it is sound, if it is whole, then the whole of the body is good. But if it is corrupt, then the whole of the body is corrupt. And he mentioned verily, it is the heart. So here again, and moving on from last week, the heart is the engine or the driving force behind our actions. Whatever a person, person's heart is attached to, that is what he will make effort towards. Because if someone loves something, they will make effort upon that. They will make sacrifices for that which they hold there in their heart. So again, it is of great importance for us to take care of our hearts. Because if we leave our hearts to our desires, we will just go astray. So know that there are things that corrupt the heart. There are many different factors that corrupt the heart. And if the heart is corrupted, so too the actions will be corrupted. And again, we must have a proper belief. We must have this proper belief embedded in our hearts so that our actions could be accepted. Because when you have a corrupted heart and your belief is corrupted, then all your good deeds will just be in vain. Again, there are those who are known for doing good, being charitable. And you find some people mention he was a good person, he was a charitable person. Anything he had, he used to give it away. But what does this benefit someone and their belief is corrupted before Allah, then every act of good that they put forth will be rejected. Why? Because the heart was corrupted. The belief was corrupted. So again, there are many things that corrupt the heart. And one of the things to look at today which corrupts the heart, it is sins. Something which we overlook the sins, something which we engage in daily and we take it as play and joke and amusement. 
And we need to start uplifting ourselves as Muslims and not just be on the block, idly wasting time, allowing the shaitan to come at us and mislead us however he chooses and pleases. Because he will come from the front, from behind, from the right, from the left. He will attack us. And he will use the worldly desires. He will use doubts. He will come at us from all angles because he does not want us to be on the straight path. So here again, brothers, sense is one of the things that corrupts the hearts. Allah mentions, nay, but their hearts will run because of what? They used to earn. Allah mentions, nay, but their hearts were run, meaning that it was covered. There was a covering on their hearts because of what they earned. So let us now look at what the Salaf, the companions of the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, mentioned concerning this verse about those whose hearts were covered because of something they earned. And Al-Hassan al-Basri, he said, it is because of doing sin after another sin until the heart becomes blind and it dies. Also, Qatada mentioned it is because of doing one sin after another sin. One sin after another sin until the heart dies and becomes black. Ibn Zaid mentioned their sins overcome their hearts until no good can get you to them. And then Mujahid explained they used to consider the heart like a hand. When a person sins, his heart starts to scrunch and then he folded one finger. And when he does another sin, he closed another finger. And then he continued closing the fingers, mentioning the sins, until the fist was clenched. And then he mentioned that a seal is placed over the heart. And they, they used to say that is the covering, that is the run that Allah mentioned that they earn. They earn this covering over their hearts because they commit sin after sin after sin. So again, brothers, be mindful of the sins that you engage in. And I advise myself firstly to fear Allah and not just come in front of the people with good actions. Because again, we have some of the Muslims in the community, when they come to the masjid, they have one a white jalab and a big beard. They have good deeds. They, they put forth salam alaikum, a big smile, a big handshake, a big hug. But when we are behind closed doors, with our wives and our children and our parents and the people who are closest to us, you find that we have uh, bad ways. We, we engage in sin after sin after sin. So again, be mindful because Allah will not cease to put a veil, a covering over your heart because this is what you earn. But alhamdulillah, Allah's mercy surpasses his wrath and his anger. And Allah is most merciful, most kind, most gracious. And there is something for the believers, something whereby we can hold on to and we have hope in Allah that Allah could remove and Allah will replace this covering from our hearts. And firstly, Allah is the one who rectifies the hearts. Allah is the possessor, the owner, the creator, the king of the hearts. 
and Allah twists it and turns it however he pleases. So if you want your heart to become purified from these sins, if you want your heart to become purified from this covering, you beg Allah. You say, oh Allah, my Lord, remove these sins from my heart. Remove the love of sins from my heart. Oh Allah, purify me and make me a better person. This is what you do first. Furthermore, something which is a weapon for the believers. It is something called repentance. And only the hypocrites and the disbelievers turn away from true repentance. Repenting to Allah alone. We do not repent like the Christians. They commit a sin and then they go by the past and say, Oh Father, I have sinned. Forgive me for I have sinned. You do not go around the place confessing to man that you have sinned. I have done such and such, and my brother do this and that. La. You go to Allah, say, oh my Lord, I have sinned, and you know that which I have done wrong. You know me better than I know my own self. Rectify my fear, rectify for me my affairs, oh my Lord. Purify me, heal me, make me a good Muslim. You turn to Allah with repentance. And repentance involves that you show remorse for the sin that you do. You do not traverse upon the sin as if you don't care. You are nobody's business because Allah will put a covering over your hearts. Allah mentions, truly Allah loves those who turn unto him in repentance. Allah loves those who turn to him in repentance. Allah loves those who turn to him seeking his forgiveness. Also Allah mentioned, but whosoever repents after his crime and does righteous good deeds, then verily Allah will pardon him. Verily Allah is oft forgiven most merciful. So here, Allah mentioned those who seek repentance. And they seek repentance from the crimes and the sins that they commit. And they do righteous deeds. As the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, whenever you sin, whenever you do a bad deed, follow it up with a good deed. And the soul of here, they mention that the good deed is repentance. Again, Allah loves those who repent. And Allah mentions another ayat, And whosoever repents and does righteous good deeds, then verily he repents to Allah with true repentance. So again, brothers, the heart is something we need to be mindful of. Because if we just leave the heart to our own desires, it will just follow in the footsteps of the shaitan. And so too our actions will be in accordance to that. And if we continue upon sin after sin after sin, Allah will place a covering over our hearts because of what we earn. But verily, and alhamdulillah, Allah is most gracious, most merciful, most kind, most loving, Allah has given us a remedy to remove these sins. Allah has given us the, the, the remedy to remove this covering. And it is called repentance. So it is something we need to start implementing in our lives. Don't just say, Allah know my heart. And it continued when sin after sin after sin. Stop the sin that you are committing. Beg Allah, have some sort of remorse. Beg Allah for forgiveness. La ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lahu. Lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala thumma amma ba'd The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that verily 
when the servant commits a sin, a black spot appears in his heart. And if he repents from it, his heart is polished clean. However, if he increases in sin, the spot will continue to increase until the heart is covered, until that blackness, it covers the heart. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned the statement of Allah, nay, but on their hearts is a run, a covering which they used to earn. So here again, people make effort to that which they love. So you find those who engage in sin after sin after sin. It is because the heart is in love with sinning. And if we just leave the heart to its desires, Allah will place a covering over the heart. And you will find some people that there is no way back for them. Because why? Allah has placed a covering over the heart. But again, one of the things that removes the sense and removes the covering is repentance, whereby we turn to Allah. We turn to Allah alone, we confess our bad deeds to Allah, and we, we, we appeal to Allah to forgive us, to have mercy on us, to guide us, to pardon us away from these evil ways, these evil sins. So again, if the actions are desiring sin, if our actions are in accordance to sin, being upon sin after sin after sin, it goes to show that something is wrong with our hearts. And there are many things that could affect the heart. Many things that could damage and kill the heart. And again, just like our bodies need nourishment, just as we know we need to eat, we need to drink, we need to exercise, we need to take care of the body, we need to perfume ourselves, we need to groom ourselves for our bodies to look good. Just as we know the body needs nourishment, so to the heart needs nourishment. One of the nourishment of the heart is repentance, turning away from this lifestyle of sin, turning away from the evil ways. Another thing which purifies the heart, another thing which polishes the heart, is seeking knowledge about your Lord, seeking knowledge about your deen, seeking knowledge about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at it. Many of us, we are Muslim for years. Years upon years, Alhamdulillah, Allah has guided us. We are Muslim for years. Three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, some people even more. But what is the condition of our heart? Some people, they pray day in, day out. Some people, they come to the masjid on a regular basis. Some people, they fast the blessed month of Ramadan after Ramadan after Ramadan. But when you find some of these people, their heart is still corrupted. Why? And they are those who seem to be engaging in righteousness. Their hearts is still corrupted. They are just showing people good deeds. Again, it is not just about performing the salah. It is not just about fasting the blessed month of Ramadan. It is about purifying our hearts, heading towards the thing that rectify our hearts. The heart, again, is the driving force, the engine behind the actions. Some people, they do actions, good deeds, but their heart is still corrupted. You find some people, they may make effort for the solar. 
They may make effort for the blessed month of Ramadan. They may make effort for the Juma. Come out for the Juma, but only to be seen by men. The heart is to be rectified, to put forth for Allah. The heart is for Allah. Many people say, only Allah knows what's in my heart. Yes, Allah knows what is in your heart. And then the deeds are built upon what is in the heart. So if someone is just traversing upon sin after sin after sin, Allah will place a covering over your heart. So again, brothers, be heedful and be mindful of the advices. Put your heart forward for Allah. Where you find some people being Muslim years upon years upon years, but then they engage in sin after sin after sin to the extent that they leave off the solar. They leave off fasting in the blessed month of Ramadan. They leave off the Juma. They leave off the deeds that they know they're supposed to do as a Muslim. And Allah is the one who puts the covering over the heart. And again, have hope in the mercy, in the repentance to Allah. Turn to Allah, seek forgiveness from your Lord. He is the one that could remove this covering from this hard heart. May Allah make us those who purify and rectify our hearts. May Allah give us soft and also firm and strong hearts because the heart needs to be soft sometimes and sometimes the heart needs to be firm. The heart needs to be firm with your wives, with your husbands, with your children, with your parents, with engaging those who deserve your love, your Muslim brothers. Sometimes your Muslim brother may do you something wrong. You need to have a soft heart and show him some forgiveness, some mercy, not have a hard heart towards your Muslim brother because all of us need some form of forgiveness on the day of judgment. He who does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. So again, sometimes the heart needs to be soft and sometimes it needs to be firm. You need to be firm against the devil. You need to be firm against the sins, the sins that we love to engage in. We need to be firm against that and say no. Today we jihadin. Today we fighting. Today we struggling against that. We ain't following the desires. May Allah give us give us hearts that are rectified and purified and soft and strong and firm for the deen of Allah. May Allah grant us His mercy and His pardon. May Allah make us those who turn to Him in repentance. Amen. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا ذابنا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك